What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you Twisting Blades Rogue, okay? So the big reason why I'm bringing Twisting Blades Rogue is because there was a big change to Twisting Blades. It did receive a buff. Let me scroll up into the patch notes for all those who do not know. Twisting Blades was buffed just a little bit. It wasn't crazy. It was 20% on the damage and then 20% on the return, which is really, really nice for Twisting Blades. Um, we were really hoping that this buff was going to get this back into the fold of Season 1, Season 2 Twisting Blades. However, through testing, it just doesn't turn out to be that way. However, I am going to bring you the build guide and give you some suggestions and things that if you do want to play Twisting Blades, that you can, in particular, end game content like Overworld, Speed Farming, Nightmare Dungeons, the uh, Hell Tides, etc. You could probably be doing some low-level pits. Um, I know that this build can probably get up into the like 110s, probably with the changes, but it's very, very particular. It's very, very different. It does require a few gear piece changes, um, which does uh, conflict with another build, which I just think is better. But with that said, let's go over absolutely everything you need to know about the build, skills, paragon, gear, etc. So let's get into it. Uh, we got puncture here puncture into fundamental this is what's going to be making enemies vulnerable also which is going to be ticking up our combo points because we are a combo point build uh then we're going to come down and we got max ranks and twisting blades into improved twisting blades okay enemies days uh, are days for 1.5 seconds which is huge you could do advanced if you really wanted to however days i think is just better um but these are interchangeable totally up to you whichever one you want to play then we got three rings into sturdy for the dr one point into siphoning strengths for the heal then we got two ranks into starter step just for some move speed. These two points you can take out and do whatever you want with. It is totally up to you. Then we got a shadow step into discipline shadow step uh, to get more charges on this when we hit kill somebody, I think. Yep. Uh, is reduced when you have, uh, when it damages an enemy, you have not hit with shadow step in the last four seconds. We do max out weapon mastery here, although this is a poison dot build in some degree but i wanted to have weapon mastery just for some additional damage on the the build itself because it is very very weak however you could take the points out of this and put them in something else uh we got dash into methodical dash to reduce the cooldown again we want to try to be as as mobile as possible uh we got rapid gambits into trick attacks to help with the knockdown and evade when we daze somebody you could do concussive strikes here if you really want to again you could take points out of here and put points in a con uh, concussive if you really wanted to. Uh, Dark Shroud, this is going to be our main survivability skill. We are going to have this with Umbrus on our gear piece, so we put this into countering for even more crit chance. You could do subverting if you want to be even faster for the overworld content, which is perfectly fine. But you need to get this to at least 10 ranks at a minimum, okay? Then we max out Exploit as well as Malice for even more damage. Then we're going to come down with Poison Imbuement here into Blended. Critical Strikes uh, deal 75% increased poison damage, which is great. We do have five charges right now, which is awesome. Now, we do uh, max out Deadly Venom here for increased poison damage, as well as one into the debilitating toxins for them to deal less damage. You could also put points into here for chemical advantage to increase your attack speed. Uh, then we max out Frigid for Nest for even more damage when we freeze. And then no ultimates or anything, guys. Then we come down and we do Close Quarters Combat for even more attack speed and bonus damage against our crowd control enemies. So right now our bonus is 69%. So uh, that is really, really nice. We're gonna have that on all of our gear pieces here. Um, you could do haste if you really wanted to for more move speed and then attack speed while below, which is also fine. You could take points out, right? Come down here and do this, which is kind of nice. You could also take the points out of weapon mastery and just be at three and do this. If you really, really wanted to, just to just to help spam, which always can feel a lot better. But yeah, guys, those are the skills. Again, I'm a little disappointed with Twisting Blades, but I had to bring you the video because we have doing some intense testing. Now, into the gear pieces, we are rocking combo points. We do have to have that, so we rank this up to three, and then we, you know, we're just gonna spam Twisting Blades whenever we rank this up. Again, it's like a shotgun effect. You're just gonna go boom, and then Twisting Blades, right? which is really nice. Now, one key element here is, is on our amulet, we got puncture resource generation. So as you can see puncture, if we throw one, 
it are it goes up to two and then the second one gives us three okay so again one even if we just hit one enemy here it's two and then two so it gives you two a piece because the generation is over a hundred percent so normally it generates one now it generates two so that way we can get to our combo points a lot faster okay all right gear pieces shaco obviously this is just best in slot if you do want to use something else like a normal helmet that is okay but this is just best in slot for this build uh we need the ranks and the twisting blades like crazy so we need to have this umbris in our gear slot again this is how we also get to 10 ranks in dark shroud you got to have dark shroud on your chest piece but we got umbris when we crit we get free ranks of dark shroud which is what you see around us which really really helps with our survivability uh then we got bursting venoms here bursting venoms uh skills have a 10 per or 15 percent chance to create a toxic pool that deals damage over time and then while you're standing in it poison imbuement gets to be cast for free so this is very very good against bosses i will talk about another power that i still think is very strong uh, but this is good again we got ranks and twisting blades and we double crit which is just nuts and then we got might for the dr because we're mainly using puncture for everything and we're just you know tapping twisting blades we're not actually spamming um, then we got the plus 20 percent to all res which is huge that really helps us out because we capped and then we are capped almost i do need to change the um the lightning note here um i, I gotta take the cold out and put a uh, shadow in there because cold is way over so i just gotta take that out and swap those guys i just haven't yet um into our boots we got noxious ice okay chilled enemies uh poison by poison imbuement will be further be chilled we deal 30 percent multiplicative damage against frozen enemies which is great into our bow which is fantastic we got retribution on here um for even double damage against knockdown or stun enemies okay and then this is very important on this build you need to crit at least once for the chance for puncture to be cast twice because then normally now it throws two right now it throws two however if you notice though the second one does not charge us up so the second throw is free it just does not charge us up so we do still have to double cast but that's okay on our dagger here we got moonrise for even more damage and attack speed then we got blade dancers for twisting blades to spin around us right that's the return and you see a spin starless skies uh for just being able to do more damage and our resource which is nice allows us to spam a little bit retribution which is doubled here because i have it on my bow um which is really nice let me go over here and, and look at what i would have on there um you got moonrise which is very important moonrise would be in this slot um we can't forget about moon or no we have moonrise oh uh it's not moonrise it's um uh elements you could do elements here which is very very strong elements is the one we're missing i believe yes we're missing elements that'd be great and then of course we got corruption here so our imbuement skills have a 60 percent increased potency which is our poison imbuement now one other thing that you could slot swap here with elements is uh i have it on my other uh where is it i have it on my other dagger for my andy's build so this one right here for pestilence points so every third cast of puncture is poison imbued automatically with a hundred percent of its normal potency 150 percent so this is very very strong this would allow us to do a lot more damage with the build however this is where we get into some gear piece changes before we go into the paragon board and some confliction with another build so this gear here is for the andy's flurry build so if you all know andy's flurry is a lucky hit build with puncture up to a 20 percent chance to trigger poison over that got increased now it's still bugged the day of this recording is the 20th so whenever this bug gets fixed the tooltip even though it says 27 percent that will not only be fixed but then when we're throwing you can see that like the poison is happening but they're the, the explosions but there's no poison effect so the 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 nova is still going and hitting the enemy but the damage is still originating from the the um character so now if i'm up close now you can see the poison damage on there right now you can see it happening and we do crazy damage but from a distance all you're gonna see is just the normal damage from puncture you don't see anything else you see the explosions but no damage you don't see any damage right see how there's just normal puncture damage but then if i get close now he's poisoned and he dies so this is 
this is one change that you can do. You could swap on and put Andy's in. And then with Pestilence points here. And then the build functions very, very well with Twisting Blades. It's probably the best. Um, again, it's literally this very similar or exactly the same as the Andy's Flurry build with the helmet. So you could build it that way and then take out Starless Skies and just put in like my rings here and my amulet where you focus on lucky hit. So you have a much higher lucky hit chance. I think we end up getting to 56% before the potion. And then when you hit the potion, then you're up eight more percent, which is huge. Or excuse me, 15%. So it makes it even stronger. So it's kind of like, if you don't like flurry, you can play twisting blades with Andes, which is perfectly fine. Um, which then makes the build a little more viable, but again, it's still all originating from the helmet, not necessarily Twisting Blades. But I will tell you that without Andy's helmet and you just run it normally, the build is just okay. I'm not even gonna showcase a, uh, a dungeon here because I, it's just it's just not as good. Oh, one last skill. We do have Caltrops here. I did forget to mention Caltrops. Uh, Caltrops just helps us scale our build damage against bosses because the poison just ramps up inside. Which is great. But it's very it's very easy to get to It's very easy to get to our combo points and just spam twisting blades. It's just I really wish it was just the build of old. Now I will say some special considerations here. Um, if you go back to season one and season two, there was a shadow version. However, that did use the malignant heart, which is very good. But I still think that there could be some kind of shadow version of Twisting Blaze. I'm still going to be messing with it. Maybe the devs will buff this ability even more. But I would say because if you go the poison route, cold doesn't do anything. I haven't, I haven't tested cold and I just cannot get it to really do a whole lot. So you either go poison or shadow. I think shadow can work. It's just scaling. It's going to be very hard against bosses. It's very hard with Twisting Blades. And that's where the poison is just significantly better. But again, I think if you're going to do Twisting Blades or Flurry, the build plays the exact same way. It's just choosing either Twisting Blades for more movement speed or Flurry for more attack speed. So you can play either. I think that the build plays pretty good. I think it got to 115 or 116, 117 with Andy's helmet in. So you could definitely do this. And then, and then like when you come up here and I know this is just normal bosses guys, but then when you're doing this, like you can see, look at the damage, like the damage and that's just, you know, it, it's just so good. And then when you scale it, right, you can see that we're doing a hundred million damage. You know, it scales so high with all the poison, 40, 50, a hundred million up the top there. Like it just, it scales so well. 80, 85, 100, 138 million. So like poison, and the Andy's poison just scales the build so crazy. And I think with Twisting Blades, with the new change to the helmet, where like the poison Nova spawns on the enemies and deals the damage, I think Twisting Blades would be much better than Flurry for like speed clearing because you know, you come up and hit them, you put throw in a Twisting Blades, and then the poison triggers on them, and you could just keep moving, right? Because the poison damage will be so high that the damage is just great, right? So when that bug gets fixed, I will test it with Twisting Blades. Um, however, these are just my concerns, guys. But real quickly, we will go over the Paragon board. Again, this build will be posted down in the description below. So again, big shout-out to Woody here. Um, I could not get a board to work, so we just... We followed Woody and just did this and we changed some things, right? So I'm running exploit, which is great. Um, but we do rack into Deadly Ambush, which I think is still bugged. Uh, and then we have Eldritch Bounty. And then we also have Exploit Weakness, which I think is also bugged with Shadow Clone. So there's still a lot going on, but we have Versatility, Tracker, Exploit, Efficacy, Control, as well as Bane. Now, you could also swap out and do, uh, where is it? Uh, fluidity, if you want, when casting an agility skill, you gain 10% increased multiplicative damage and energy regen, which is fine. You can swap that out because you have dash, shadow step, as well as caltrops. Those are all agility skills, and you can pretty much keep that uh, as 100% uptime. 
especially speed farming, but it's totally up to you. But yeah, guys, Twisting Blades um, is still down and out, even with the buff. So I just wanted to bring this to you guys. Like the video. Let's get this up to 100 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Twisting Blades and the buff. If anybody has experimented with Twisting Blades, give me some suggestions here. I would really like to make the build so much better than what it is currently because I do like Twisting Blades. Again, however, with Andy's, I just think it's basically one or the other, which is fine. You run Flurry or you run Twisting Blades, and the build is exactly the same. So give me some suggestions, guys. Let me know down in the comments if anybody's tested it. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.